We are about uh, six weeks into a series of messages called Living Upside Down in a Me First World. Now, if I was talking to my granddaughters, I would call that Living Downside Up. Think about that. Is downside up and upside down the same? Absolutely. Uh, And so the first three weeks that uh, Seth preached on this, he taught about Jesus coming into a culture and a world in the Middle Eastern culture and turning things radically upside down, taking things that people thought were normal and changing them. He didn't take for granted what was, but he was about radical change. And that's what we're about, radical change in our hearts and transformation. Two weeks ago, we heard from the folks from Bread of Life uh, Community uh, Ministry up in Greensburg, where uh, you had the opportunity to sign up to serve in their food pantry. Has anybody served up there yet? Anybody signed up? Ooh, we're going to have, thank you. We have an opportunity today to continue to put action into that service. Second week after, last week, we had the folks from Voices of Children come and speak. And uh, our own Bill Goodwin is a CASA, and he testified on the uh, video screen about what it means to be a a CASA, to stand in support of a child who needs an advocate, who doesn't have a voice at the court uh, setting. And today we're going to hear from folks from the Hope Center Indianapolis. The Hope Center Indy is an incredible ministry. I had the privilege of visiting a few weeks ago, and uh, it's a refuge for women, a refuge for women. And God has done some amazing things. We're going to invite Pastor Hubert up in a minute to uh, share a bit of the story. Um, Pastor Hubert Nolan was here about a year ago and, and shared a message and shared a bit of the vision of Hope Center. It opened officially, probably formed, in 2016. He's, he is the uh, co-founder and executive director of it, and this is an incredible place where women experience God's love and transformation through uh, a wonderful environment that has been created. Now, we get to partner with these ministries, and it's a wonderful opportunity, and partnership is more than just giving. 10% of the reach generosity initiative funds are given to ministries outside the church but it's more than just giving money it we we the congregation you all each one of you are called to serve in this finding a place where you can put action into reality put your feet to the ground your hands to the grindstone and make a difference in these ministries we also do that through prayer praying for these ministries and for God to use them to touch those and transform lives around the world. You saw 23 of our own putting feet on the ground and hands in the air in India just a few moments ago. Do you realize that's 10% of our adult congregation that, came, that went to India? That is phenomenal. So we have a very giving and serving body, and you're going to have that opportunity in a few minutes at the end of the service. So I'd like to... Uh, invite uh, Pastor Hubert to come up. He is uh, currently the executive director of Hope Center Indianapolis. He founded the Brookville Road Community Church in New Palestine, Indiana. He also uh, currently lives with his lovely wife Tanya in Shelbyville. Uh, They've uh, been married for 42 years. I know you won't believe it when you see them because they don't look anywhere old enough to have been married 42 years, but they have been, and they still are smiling. That is awesome. And uh, they have five children and nine grandchildren. So, Pastor Hubert, welcome. Um, Let's uh, greet him, please. (laughs) Thank you, sir. Awesome. Hey, it's wonderful to be with you guys again, and um, when... 42 years, my goodness, that is a long time, you know, but when you're having fun, right? Amen. Amen. So, wow, let me just start by saying um, it's good to be back with you. I think I was actually here in 16 and 17 and was able to share a little bit about the Hope Center. The Hope Center is a refuge for ladies, and in 2016, I stepped aside after 33 years of pastoral ministry at Brookville Road to start the Hope Center. 
And um, when I did, we had no building. We just had a dream, a concept of what we'd like to do. And so you guys, Greensburg and Batesville, came on board to start supporting us before we had a location, before we had one resident. And you guys believed in us before we were believing in ourselves, I think, which was pretty amazing. And uh, so you were like the third church that picked us up when it came to support for the Hope Center. So the first one was Brookville Road Community Church, the church I pastored for 33 years. The second one was our daughter church in Greenfield, Brandywine Community Church, and you guys. And so I just want to say thank you for believing in us and the vision of what we were trying to accomplish. And then today we now have a 26-acre campus, 140,000-square-foot facility. Uh, Just uh, last August, we took in our first resident, and so over the last year, we've been able to serve and help about 35 to 38 women. And so the Lord is just beginning to do some miraculous things at the Hope Center. So thank you for your input. Thank you for being part of who we are and what we're doing. And we're here to share with you a little bit more about what God's doing when it comes to life change at the Hope Center. And that was our desire, and that was our dream when it came to putting together a Hope Center, we wanted lives to be transformed by the grace of God. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And uh, we're just going to look at one verse of Scripture. You know, sometimes I could, when I first started, I could preach the whole Bible in one message. And now I can just preach one verse. So that tells you something, doesn't it? So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. But I am going to ask you to stand just for the uh, reading of God's Word. It's a verse of Scripture that if you haven't memorized, you need to memorize it. It is the complete definition of what a born-again believer is all about. All right, so the Apostle Paul says this, Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, if anyone be in Christ, he says, you become a new creation. The old things pass away, and all things become new. Lord, just add your blessing to your word today as we share together about this wonderful truth about new life in Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. When I think about the new birth, so often I've used a phrase like this, God is a God of second chance. You ever use a phrase like that? You say things like that? God is a God of second chance. And in one way, he really is. But when you think about it, I'm not really sure which chance I would be on. Second, third, fourth, fifth, you understand what I'm saying? Are you on your tenth chance? It just doesn't quite give us the the understanding of the amazing grace that God has really given to each one of us when it comes to God. In other words, God doesn't say, okay, here's your life, and with your life, I'm going to give you this one opportunity, and you make it right. You live for me, you honor me, you love me, you serve me, and so you have this one incredible life he's given you, and then you and I, we mess it up, and so God says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you another chance to get it right, be right, do right. This is what you need to do. I know you can do it. All you need to do is try a little bit harder, and you'll finally get it right. There was this pastor who said to um, a gentleman, he said to him, hey, son, he said, have you are you, are you a believer? Have you given your life to Christ? Are you a Christian? And so he says to him, uh, well, um, I think so. He said, I think I'm a Christian. At least I'm trying to be. And so the pastor said to him again, well, let me ask you another question. Have you ever tried being an elephant? Because the truth of the matter is, you and I can't try to be a Christian. It's not God giving you another chance. It's God making you a brand new person in Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians says, when you become in Christ, you become a new person with new attitudes, new desires, new actions. Everything's going to change about you. The old life that you once had, it's going to pass away. And you're going to have this brand new life, abundant, eternal life coming into you. And that's who you're going to become. When I think about that, old life, God doesn't say, this is what I need you to do. I want you to give me your old life, and I'm going to patch it up. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to do some renovation. I'm going to repair it, and then I'm going to give it back to you, and it's going to be this new, improved you. That's not what Jesus does. Matter of fact, Jesus says, no, I don't want to take your old life and give it patchwork, renovate it, do a self-makeover. That's not what I'm all about. I'm going to make a brand new person in you. There was this uh, businessman who owned a warehouse, and 
he had put it on the market he wanted to get rid of it it was fairly old and it got vandalized before he was able to sell it and they busted windows out of it there was some repairs that needed to be done there was trash everywhere in the building and so he was actually walking through his warehouse with a potential buyer and when he was walking through the warehouse with a potential buyer, he was embarrassed by looking at his building, windows busted out, things needed repaired, and trash everywhere. And so finally he said to the potential buyer, I tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to fix these windows, we're going to repair everything, we'll clean this place up, we're going to make sure that it's satisfactory to you for your use. And I just want you to know that. If you want the building, we're going to fix everything and make it just the way you need it to be. And so as the, he was walking through with this potential buyer, the potential buyer said, hey, don't worry about fixing anything. Don't fix those windows. Don't repair anything. Don't clean this trash out of here. He said, I don't want the building. I want the site. I'm not going to create something out of this old building. I'm going to tear it down. I'm going to build something brand new. Now, sometimes in our Christian life, what we want to do to God is say this, God, here's this old building, this old life of mine. I need you to patch it up. I need you to repair it. I need you to do some renovation. I need you to clean it up a little bit. And God says to you, I don't want your old life. I just want the site. I just want you, complete you. And when you give me your life, I'm going to create a brand new you. Isn't that beautiful what the Bible says he does for you? In John chapter 3, verse 3, he says, I'm going to give you a new birth. It's going to like, you're going to be born all over again. It's going to be brand new from the very beginning. And then Ezekiel says this, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to put it right in here. And then I'm going to give you a new spirit. And this spirit that will live in you, he will guide you and direct you and lead you to become more Christ-like each and every day. I remember 42 years ago when I gave my life to Christ, it was like Jesus said to me, hey, Hubert, I got an offer for you. This is my offer. If you want to, you can keep this old life of yours filled with sin and shame and regret. I mean, I was kind of at the end of myself. I kind of was spiraling downward in alcohol and drugs and all those kind of things and kind of came to the end of myself. And so Jesus says, no, you can keep your old life if you want to. You can keep it with your sin and shame and all the things that's kind of going on. Or if you want to, he says, I will give you this new life, this life that is filled with joy and peace and purpose and passion and direction. And he says, I'll tell you what, you can think it over. If you want to keep your old life, you can. Or if you want to, you and I can do this life exchange. And I will exchange my life for yours. And you can have this life in me. And so one of the beautiful things that we're beginning to see is life e exchange especially at the Hope Center, but also in the lives of people who just volunteer, who actually just come to the Hope Center. We say this, the Hope Center is a place for healing for everyone, not just the residents, but everybody who comes to the Hope Center. There is things that are happening in and through their lives. There's this incredible presence of God doing miracles even for those who come to serve. Well, I remember when I gave my life to Christ then 42 years ago, just that incredible moment of life change. And from that moment of life change, for the last 42 years, I've been on this incredible adventure of living and serving him and seeing him change the lives of other people around us. Well, this morning, we're excited about having a couple ladies uh, from the center. They're going to come and share your, their story with you. And so I'm going to ask Megan and Shawnee to come up. And as they come, uh, it takes courage to come up and share your, your story, right? And so I want you to give them a warm welcome. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> All right. My name is Megan, and I'm 29 years old. Growing up, I didn't have a relationship with the Lord, but I went to church a few times with my grandmother. Growing up, I had a baseball team of eight siblings. My dad worked hard and long hours to provide for us. My mom drank, and I was Mommy Junior taking care of the kids. Eventually, having all of us kids became too much for my mom, and she dropped us off with my dad when I was nine years old. We would hear from her here and there, but that was the extent of our relationship. When I was 10, my dad had a girlfriend whose son molested me. By the age of 11, I was drinking, and after that, I started on a downward spiral. Getting drunk became a regular thing in my teens. At 18, I started smoking marijuana, and soon thereafter, I was in a Xanax and pain pills. By the age of 20, I was strung out on cocaine and crack followed close behind. These things led me to a man that I met when I was 23 years old. 
I thought he loved me. Only in the end, he tore me down and manipulated me. He played mind games, used physical and mental abuse to break me down, and he used me to fund his lifestyle. Around this time, my mom came back into my life. It was a relationship of using, but I didn't care. All I'd ever wanted was my mama back. At the age of 24, I became an IV drug user and heroin became a close friend. Over all this time, I had OD'd three times, been in and out of drug treatments, jails, bake rack facilities, and I had nothing to do with my family. Three years ago, my mom lost her battle with addiction and I went into a tailspin. Seven months after losing my mother, I was in the hospital with endocarditis, a blood clot in my heart from IV drug use, and pneumonia from being homeless in 17 degree weather. My kidneys were failing and I couldn't even walk. My body was shutting down on me. I remember lying in the hospital bed praying for help. I was scared and angry and I didn't want to die like my mom had. After nine weeks in the hospital, I got better. I'd like to say that I learned my lesson, but the truth is I went right back to the streets, drugs, and trafficking myself. It was all I knew. I was homeless, sleeping behind a dumpster, doing the same old thing once again. After this, I came to a point of contemplating suicide. I remember standing on the side of US-1, staring at all the cars passing by, wanting to end my life. I was gonna step out into traffic. I was tired and I had had enough. All of a sudden, a woman came out of nowhere. She walked over to me and asked me if I was okay. I was honest with her and told her that I was not okay. She called 911 and waited for the ambulance to pick me up. As I was getting into the ambulance, I turned to thank her, but she was nowhere to be found. Maybe she was God's angel on a mission. At least for me, she was. This is where I started my new journey towards healing. First at the Agape home in Florida for a year and a half, and then here at Hope Center Indy. The Lord has really begun a good work in me, and I'm becoming a new person in Christ. The Lord has restored my family relationships, especially with my dad and my stepmom, who I thank God for every day. She is the mother I always needed. I have my doggy Basil. I've received inner healing for some of the anger and hurts towards my mom. And I'm learning to love myself in that it's okay not to be okay all the time. Most importantly, I have a relationship with my Heavenly Father that can never be broken, and I am forever changed because of Him. My Father God reminds me daily that my past does not define me, that I have hope for my future. I've been here at the Hope Center for over seven months, and God's been blessing me left and right. I started at Grace College Online, majoring in mental health and substance abuse counseling. My hope is to stay at the Hope Center to work when my program is done. My goal is to help other women and show them another way and that it's possible to make it out. I believe God led me to the Hope Center for such a time as this. I am a transformed woman because of him. If you would have seen me a couple years ago and see me now, you would easily see the incredible new person that Christ has made. Have I arrived? No, but I'm well on my way and I no longer see the junkie failure when I look in the mirror. I see a strong, courageous woman of God. And I recently celebrated two years clean. To him be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for letting me share my story. (laughs) Hi, I'm Shawnee, and I'm a grateful believer in Christ. I want you to know, this may be hard to hear, it was hard to write, but I give all the glory to God for saving me and shining the light. As a child, I was sexually abused and trafficked, and I was neglected. My mom was an addict, my dad an alcoholic. My childhood, starting at age six, was my dad molesting me and my sister. My mom abusing us, neglecting us, depriving us of shelter and food, and trafficking us for her own drug money. It was a constant struggle not to get hurt in one form or another daily. We would live with my dad, where the sexual abuse would continue, only to go back to our mom where the cycle of drug abuse and being trafficked continued. This was my life from age six to 13. I felt so unworthy and felt like us kids were the reason behind the abuse. We had no contact from family because of my parents' actions. Then there came the last day we seen our mom. She left us at a hotel and never came back. 
I was 12, and around that time, my dad had disappeared. My oldest brother tried to help, but was homeless himself. He took us to an old friend's house where I was sexually abused again. At the age of 13, I had been sexually abused over 40 times. My brother later died when I was 15 from a drug overdose. I had enough and ran away to the cops, and us kids ended up in foster care. I was unable to cope, so I began cutting and swallowing objects. The pain was too great. I eventually ended up in my first group home, which led to about 15 more and 20 hospital stays over the course of eight years. I felt so lonely because my brothers and sister were adopted. I was angry, felt rejected, living out my pain. I would always try to hurt myself and others. That lasted from 13 to 21. Every group home gave up on me and sent me to another one, but I'm thankful Jesus never gave up on me. When I was 17, one of the group homes would take me to church and I accepted Jesus. I felt so lost, but deep down inside, I felt his love and protection. My last group home tried their best to prepare me to transition to society by getting me a job in an apartment. Well, after a month, I started running the streets. I ended up pregnant, giving birth to twins, and then lost my home. After that, my life just continued to get worse. I ended up giving custody to their aunts and running the streets more. That's when I started using drugs. When I found out I was pregnant again, I knew I could not provide the best life for my baby, so I placed them up for adoption. That family is a major blessing. After that, I felt so hopeless. I was in a downward spiral with prostitution and major drug use. I felt there was no hope for me. When I found out I was expecting a fourth baby, I cried out to God. Around that time, my mom died from drugs. I could not continue to live that lifestyle. Just as it says in Isaiah 40, 29 through 31, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power on the weak. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They were sore on wings like eagles. At that time, I had hoped to get out of the streets, and in every way I did. I ended up in detox, which helped me get stronger. By the grace of God, I was led to the Hope Center. I can say for the first time, I am seven months clean from drug abuse. But more important, I'm growing more and more close to God daily. I have quit smoking, and I am finding new healthy ways to handle my emotions. Just as Romans 8, 2 says, the law of the Spirit set me free from the law of sin and death. This is where I'm at in my life. The faith I have and the courage to keep on going will continue to grow me in all areas of my life. I'm slower to judge and quicker to have compassion. I turn my fear into determination and I use my painful past to create a bright future. I believe in miracles because I'm a walking miracle. Call, God is calling me to speak my story to the lives of abused children. I will travel sharing the gospel and testimony of my chatter childhood to the soldier I am today. I wanna end this by saying prayer and faith will set you free. When you know in your heart all things are possible through Christ, you will witness a wonderful transformation. I give all glory to God for taking my lost soul and making me whole in his image. What the enemy intended as death, God has brought to life. I stand here before you today, a miracle. God has delivered me from drug addiction, prostitution, self-harming, rage, rejection, and most recently, cigarettes. I've been made new. I want to read Psalm 63, 1 through 5, which is my heart today. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you, I will praise you as long as I live, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I'll praise you with songs of joy. Thank you for letting me share. I want to brag on them just a little bit because uh, they deserve it, don't they? And isn't that beautiful? 
Megan just started college at Grace College, and uh, she just finished her first semester. She pulled a 3.8, and so we are just really excited for her. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> and then Shawnee's kind of becoming the prayer warrior at uh, the Hope Center, and she's created a prayer room. She calls it the War Room. You guys seen the, the movie yeah. The War Room? So she's created a, the War Room where she goes to pray, not only for her family and the kids but also for the residents and all the staff and so we are so grateful for her heart and what god is doing it's absolutely amazing to see the transformation that's taking place one of the things we realize at the hope center is christ can transform and i don't care where you've been what you've gone through he can bring healing into your heart and life and help you to have a new beginning and so that's a beautiful thing so um, we're just so grateful to be here. Thanks for letting us share. Uh, we'd love for you to come to the Hope Center and visit us. If you have been there uh, in the last year, how, how many came up and did a, a workout or did a tour or something? How many of you? Yes, yeah, some of you. Thank you. Um, well, let me just say, if you were there in the last year, it has completely been transformed, and you probably wouldn't hardly know the place. It is amazing all the things that's been accomplished. We actually now have the 24-7 prayer center up and going. We need to get Barry there to lead worship, don't we, ladies? Huh? We need to get him there to lead worship for us. And uh, so it's going. We teamed up with IHOPE, which is Indiana House of Prayer and Equipping. They are there, and they're helping uh, lead worship on Tuesday, Friday. They also do worship for the ladies on a Friday afternoon. They are fabulous, and they're just trying to create prayer, seven twenty-fours, people coming and praying. So you were one of the first of three churches. Now we have about 75 churches on board that are supporting the Hope Center and helping us. And when I say that, we probably need 175. It is our goal for all these ladies to come free. It costs us about $3,000 a month for them to be there. And so far, they've been able to come free. And so that's God's amazing blessing to them. And it's part of what we've been able to do by sharing with you guys and you coming on board to support and help. So. Well, thank you so much. So good to be with you guys. I'll turn it back to Skip. So. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, and the new is here. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hubert, Shawnee, and Megan, for your encouraging words and your stories and your willingness. God is faithful, isn't he? Now, you have an opportunity now to put some action against what you've heard. We have a table over here like we've had the last two weeks, and you can sign up to serve on a very specific day, November 10th. They're going to have a work project for as many of you as can come, to a blend of probably work inside and out, but you know it's going to be labor, uh, and they need it. They have this huge, gorgeous campus. It was a former college, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just amazing. So sign up over at the table. And if you'd like to become a volunteer in any of their other aspects of the ministry, you can go online to Hope Center, Center Indy with a Y, dot org, and fill out a volunteer application. And then they'll contact you about opportunities and to use your skills. And I think any skill can be used because they, this is a massive operation. And it's, it's really, really wonderful. So please take the opportunity when we're done here to go straight to the table. And if there's a long line, be patient. Have some more coffee and, uh, and, and sign up, please. I want to offer some words from St. Teresa of Avila. And these words, I think, are really, really precious. And they're the words that were given to the India team, in both in in prayer and in a little card for them to be reminded of what they were about to head into. So if you'd close your eyes and just listen to the words of Teresa of Avila. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. 
you have that opportunity to make a difference. And when you reach out to serve, you too are changed. You reap great blessing. And you get to see God work in incredible ways. So I encourage you to serve.